day of prayer. People will be gathering in throughout this time to stand together, to put our focus on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and to stand and declare His word, His ways. And today, you know, we're here because the National Day of Prayer belongs to people of all faiths, but we're here hosting a Judeo-Christian rally. And we want to start, first of all, with worship because that's what matters and fills the atmosphere. So Aubrey Breedlove and her family and some others will be here. There's actually three generations of her family up here today. They've driven in from Jacksonville to lead us in worship and I've asked Aubrey to pray. And then after that, we'll be praying and standing together here at the heart of our state government. God bless you guys as we worship the Lord together. We love you, God. We thank you for this great nation that you've given us. Lord, we come here today to honor you. You are the most high. You are above every other name. Jesus, we come to worship you. We come to exalt you. Jesus, we ask you that you would be glorified and honored today. We thank you for what you're doing in America. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing with families, Lord, right now. Lord, we thank you for raising up the young ones right now. In Jesus' name. So we set our eyes on you, Jesus. We set our attention on you, Lord. You are the one that paid the price for us, Jesus. We want to acknowledge you this morning. Acknowledge you, Jesus. Oh, let your wind blow in this place today, oh God.
way to start the National Day of Prayer is in worship. Worship. Three generations up here declaring God's word. I want to welcome you guys to the National Day of Prayer. And you know, this day belongs to people of all faiths, but we are hosting a Judeo-Christian observance today here at the Capitol, and we're excited today to cry out for the healing of our land together, right here at the heart of our state government, to stand for families. And I'm so thankful that we live in Florida, a state of freedom, freedom of religion, freedom declaring the unborn will live. And I just, I want us to start out today with our hearts just um, on the Father. And I want Pastor Derek McGee. He's a good friend. He's the senior pastor of Bible-based church in Tallahassee. He's going to do the opening prayer. Come on up, Pastor Derek. And uh, today the theme is exalt the Lord who has established us. And you know, the Lord has established us. And, and uh, Pastor Derek McGee worked in government. That's where I first met him. He worked for Governor Rick Scott, and we'd have lots of prayer meetings back in his office, okay? Yes, I see some of the governor's office over there. Hi, guys. <laughs> we can pray. Guess what? We can pray. We can pray. We have freedom of religion. Our leaders have freedom of faith. And that is what's amazing, that in America... We have freedom to pray right here. So we're going to open in prayer. The prayer is going to be followed by um, the fifth grade children from Community Leadership Academy. They're going to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I talked to Peter Bulware and his wife, Kinsey, yesterday. They send their greetings, and they we're sorry they couldn't be here, but they, they are praying and praying and praying. So kids, come on up and get ready to be, to be ready to do the pledge. Pastor McGee. Let us pray together. Oh, Lord, our Lord, Father, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And on this day and in this moment, oh, God, we invoke your presence, your power and your spirit. We thank you for being who you are, for there is absolutely no one anywhere greater than you. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your creation a part of what you are doing in the earth. For there is no accident when your power is involved. Father, thank you for National Day of Prayer. Thank you for the ability to be able to cry loud and spare not. Thank you that we are a people who have been chosen by you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your very image. And for that, we give you glory. Today, Father, I pray for our city for our state, for our country, that we will be endowed in your spirit under the blood of Jesus Christ. That we, Lord God, will be unapologetic to own the name that we know has all power. We thank you that you have the absolute power to change the direction that the enemy thinks he has power to do. For you have no threats and you have no competitor, for you are God and beside you there is none other. God, we pray for our governor. We pray for our lieutenant governor. Pray for our cabinet officers. Oh, God, we pray that you would endow them every day with wisdom necessary to make wise decisions and be led by your spirit and by your power. Thank you for a hedge of protection that guides them and guards them against the penetration of the enemy. Thank you that you are covering their families against any attacks that may try to come against them as well. It is spiritual warfare. And your word says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Father, we cry out to you now on this day that we as a people of God would always keep you preeminent in all that we do. For we give you praise because we know that you have the power to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we never asked and or think. Thank you for what you're doing in our families how you are turning the hearts of the children back to their parents and parents back to their children. Thank you for how you are reinvigorating love in marriages, oh God, because that is ordained by you. For your word says that marriage is honorable and all in the bed is undefiled. So today, Father, as we pray, we pray unto you. For your word says that when you pray, not if we pray, but when we pray, that we ought to shut the door and those we pray in secret, you reward us openly. So Father, we pray unto you knowing that God that you have the power to hear and answer prayer. Thank you that your will is perfect. Thank you that you are fully aware. And we honor you, O God, that we are children of the Most High God, and we're not ashamed to declare your name publicly and privately. So, Father, have your way today. 
Move by your spirit, move by your power, move by your might. And we promise not if, but, but when you do what you're going to do, oh God, we're going to give you praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving. We bless you, we thank you, we honor you. And now, Father, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, let them, Lord God, acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and you're our redeemer. And I seal this prayer in the name that I believe has all power, the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God, and amen. If you can stand for the pledge, I, I meant to tell you to stand for the prayer too, but let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance as the children lead us. stay up here. I know there's some of them that are going to come up and pray. You know, I felt like it was so appropriate that we started the day with the kids praying because we have seen major spiritual attacks on hearts and minds of students around our nation. And we must pray for children of all ages, for students of all ages, for teachers for parents. And I know today we've got a lot of um, kids out here, uh, homeschoolers, private schoolers, wave your hands, mom. Yeah, okay. And I know we've got a retired teacher here too, um, Lori Lawson Cox. She was a um, phys ed teacher for 36 years and she just retired. So I'm happy to have her here. And we've got moms that have been fighting the fight. And so I want to have the kids pray. There's five of them from CLA, and their teacher, Miss Tammy Lou, is going to pray. We have Emma Fieldman, Ethan Hevner, Ariella Reeves, Emery Simpson, and Dawson Simon, sorry, Emery Simon, and Dawson Wagama. Yeah. And one more. Okay. What, what's your name? Mar Marley Carbonow. And you know what? These kids were asked. Who wanted to pray? And they thought maybe one or two would volunteer. But all of them wanted to pray today on the National Day of Prayer. So let's hear them pray. And if you want to be seated, you can. That's okay. I know it's hot. It's fine. But let's pray for the families and listen to the children as they pray for our nation. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we could all make it here today. And I thank you for the people who do not know you to know you to know, get to know you and the people who do to continue to grow a relationship with you. I thank you that we have the freedom to pray and I thank you for all that you have done for us and will continue to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father God, I thank you that, that we all were able to come here today and praise you, Lord, and thank you for everything that you've done for us and that we live in a free country away from everything like slaves and people out there. And I pray for our city, our state, our country, and everything. And I hope everyone is safe today. Dear Lord, I pray that today would go very well. And I'm, I pray that the Holy Spirit would be over us today and that people who would not know you would come to you and that we would all get to know you, Lord. And someday when we're all in heaven, Lord, that we will all praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Lord, I thank you that we all got to be here today. And please help the pe our country's leaders who are making very hard decisions. And please help us to all stay safe and help all the sick. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can all gather together to worship your name today. And we pray for the people in Ukraine and other places that just don't know you and they need help. And we pray that we can have a great day and that we can just spend this time to worship you. Amen. 
Dear Lord, thank you for our ability to come and gather in this place to worship you. I thank you for everyone and everything here. Dear Lord Jesus, please watch over our city, state, nation, and the world. Please help us to respect one another and treat everyone the way that we would want to be treated. And dear Lord Jesus, please forgive us when we have sinned and turned away from you. Thank you, dear Lord, for being all-knowing, mighty, and forgiving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you so much for these children who were willing to step out in faith, unashamed of you, God. You said that if we are ashamed of you, that you'll be ashamed of us before your Father in heaven, and they're not ashamed of you. They love you. And God, we lift up every family that's participating here today and those who couldn't make it. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over the families in America. We ask you to forgive us where we have sinned, where we've fallen short of your honor and glory, where we have not stood up for righteousness, God. We ask you to forgive us where we have stood idly by and allowed the evil to penetrate our society. Father, you created us all one, all equal, and this is one nation under God. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the public school system. I pray for our leaders that are making the decisions regarding these things. And, Father God, I just pray for private schools, for charter schools, that you would be with these children. They're our next generation. And without them, Lord God, we are doomed to failure. But we will not fail because we have Jesus first. And you said, if we trust in you with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge you, that you would direct our paths. So, Father, lead us now in the name of Jesus. Lead us where you'd have us to go. And I pray in the one true God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I love to hear kids pray. And teachers, I wanna just say a fast prayer for you guys, okay? And I know we've got moms and dads here and you know, moms for liberty, other moms and dads that have been standing. We are in a spiritual battle and we're praying for you kids. We're praying for you teachers. I know you're, you're here as well, the fifth grade teacher. And Lord, we just thank you for these kids today who've prayed. Lord, may they know you all the days of their lives. And God, may the teachers and Lord, others, as we've got students here and those that are watching from around the state, Lord, we are praying for the kids, the children. Wrap your arms of love around the kids, around the teachers, around the moms and dads now. And Lord, as we pray, we thank you, Lord, for this young generation that they have prayed today and they're going to pray tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And Lord, I pray that all the days of their lives, they seek your face. Bless them abundantly and use them mightily for your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. Awesome, huh? <laughs> I, I felt like that was the way to start the day, okay? Sorry, government people, you are important, but these guys are the next generation that are gonna be in your position one day, right? <laughs> so I wanna take a few minutes. Um, I'm Pam Olson, I've been leading the National Day of Prayer here at the State Capitol. Uh, it's been, this is our 28th year, and I was a young mom of four kids when I started because I wanted to fight the fight of faith for our nation. And now I have 12 grandkids and probably more that will be on the way. And most of them are here today. And you know, it matters that we have people in government that stand up and fight for families. And we have a governor. We have an awesome governor and first lady, don't we? Yeah, let's praise God for our governor and first lady. That's not a political statement, okay? Just so you know, it's a governor that stands for the life of the unborn, stands for Israel, stands and fights for the families. It matters. It matters. And thank God our first lady, Casey DeSantis, is cancer free. Praise God for that. And you know what? The governor wanted to be here today, but he was down at the National Day of Prayer in Hialeah today. And I've been on the prayer calls with him. I prayed for the lieutenant governor yesterday. There's just a lot going on, okay? But I, he wanted to greet us today. And so I want us to play the Governor Ron DeSantis' greeting for the National Day of Prayer. So let's hear what Governor DeSantis has to say to us here at the Capitol today. Hello, this is Governor Ron DeSantis, and I want to thank pastors, community leaders, and Floridians for gathering and practicing your First Amendment right on today's National Day of Prayer. Over the past year, my family has felt the power of prayer in our own lives. The outpouring of support for my wife and our First Lady Casey DeSantis from across Florida and across the world help us get through a very trying time. And today, we can say that those prayers were answered because the First Lady is cancer-free. And just last week, 
received her final radiation treatment. Now, shortly after I became governor, I launched the Governor's Faith and Community-Based Initiative to increase cooperation between state government and Florida's faith-based institutions and organizations. This past November, we launched the Governor's Faith and Community Initiative Office to break down silos between state agencies and civil society. A few weeks ago, I signed into law the strongest pro-life protections in Florida in a generation as well as legislation to promote fatherhood, to increase funding for foster care, and to promote adoption. Last year, I signed a bill ensuring a moment of silence for reflection in public schools, which students and teachers can use to pray. Thank you to the prayer warriors and faithful across Florida, and may we all pray that religious liberty will forever abide in our midst. So as long as I'm governor, I can assure you that it will. Thank you, and God bless you all. That's awesome. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to make sure that he greeted us today, and I think that's great because we do have a governor and first lady that fight for families and our lieutenant governor and her husband, Adrian, and they're all of their children. So I know others will be praying for them, but I just want to take a moment just to pray for them. I pray with them. I've been blessed through the last three and a half, almost, well, almost four years to pray with them. And just take a moment, Lord. First of all, we thank you for touching our First Lady and healing her of cancer. Keep your hand upon her. Strengthen her, Lord. Lord, I know her and the governor, first of all, are a man and woman of God. Then a wife and a, and a, um, a husband and then a mom and dad. Then governor and First Lady. Lord, may they always keep it in that order. Bless them. Use them in the midst of all the warfare that's going on in our nation. Wrap your arms around them and keep them safe and their children. Lieutenant Governor Nunez, her husband Adrian, and their three children. Watch over them. Bless them abundantly, Lord. And we thank you for leaders that stand for life and liberty and freedom, according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm going to introduce somebody. Come, come on up, Eric. I'm, uh, I've gotten to know this guy a lot since he started. He um, is the faith, actually, what is your official title? You're the faith liaison to the governor. The governor picked Eric Dellenbeck because Eric has did the Tim Tebow Foundation before he came in government. I got to know him right away, and I serve on the faith-based community-based advisory council with him. I'm not here wearing that hat today. I'm here wearing the hat that I love the Lord, and I want to pray at our capital, right? But Eric is here, and he's going to greet us and pray. So thank you for being here, Eric. We appreciate you. <laughs> oh, and officially, before I let him, come on, okay? The uh, governor has issued a proclamation. You can see it online. And the cabinet members have issued a cabinet resolution for the National Day of Prayer. And that's awesome, and it's great. So please read it online. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Well, God is good all the time, not just today on the National Day of Prayer, but 365 days. Uh, thank you, Pam, for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. How special, right? It feels good to be back together. It feels good to be under the shadow. Well, there's no shade. There's no shadow. It feels good to be next to the old Capitol building and being able to share this time together. Um, you know, it's interesting. I know that it would be great to have the governor here today, but what a great issue to have that we have National Day of Prayer events happening all over our state. Uh, we don't know the exact number, but there are a ton because we've been hearing from pastors in different cities, different counties. And so how great is it that we are unified as a state on this day, uh, begging and surrendering our state for the will of God? I think what I want to share with you before I pray is that in 2019, the governor started the Governor's Faith and Community-Based Initiative. And the reality of that initiative was the governor simply saying that before there was government dealing with all these things, faith institutions were standing in the gap for vulnerable citizens, vulnerable populations. They were the original community-based care model. Why in the world would we not be working closely with them? And so in 2019, that was my directive. I would say there's three goals, just so you get to know our governor a little bit better, you get to know a little bit more about how he thinks through things. There are three goals that we have in this state through the Governor's Faith Initiative, Faith and Community Initiative. One is to deepen our relationships with the 20,000 faith institutions of our state. I can tell you that we sent out 40,000 thank you notes 
to those institutions saying, we don't even know all the ways you serve our vulnerable populations, but we know you're doing it and we thank you because we couldn't do it without you. And we opened a line of communication, and so that's kind of been priority number two, is to open a line of communication where our faith institutions and our state learn real time of the needs that are happening from our state agencies. And then our third goal is to look internally at our state agencies and make sure that we are receivingly receptive to the work of the faith and community organizations in our state. So at the end of the day, you know what my job is? To say thank you. To say thank you to a bunch of faith institutions and individuals that have stood in this state for a long time, stood for our vulnerable populations, care for our communities. Uh, there's a bunch of our state leaders, they're, they're hiding, that's the humility of them. They're hiding in the backgrounds of some of these little crowds right here. Uh, can I tell you that we feel the prayers, I hear of the prayers that many of you pray for our governor, for our first lady. We hear the prayers that you pray for these men and women that you probably don't even know the name of. It was my great honor today to sit with the leaders of our state and say, you guys have no concept of how many people in this pray in this state pray for you every day. And I would just ask you to continue it. As I'm going to pray in a minute, my prayer is for a prayer of Holy Spirit wisdom and discernment. Because we're entering times that don't make sense. There's no way that a person can be fully prepared for without understanding that God has a will and a control and an ability to help us guide through these situations. The last thing I'll share before I pray is that uh, I don't think things are coincidence. I don't really buy the whole coincidence thing. And so for the last two and a half years, we have been building and enhancing our work in faith institutions as it relates to foster care, adoption, um, just caring for single moms. The First Ladies launched an initiative called the Pathway to Prosperity. Isn't it interesting that 72 hours ago, that seems to make a whole lot more sense why we've spent two and a half years caring and being ready for a whole bunch of kids. My, my community and faith initiative for the governor is, is for all faiths. But my prayer for you today will be in my personal faith of Christianity. So if you'll join me in prayer. Oh, God, you are unrivaled. You are unequaled. There is none like you. And every minute that we don't spend surrendered in a posture of obedience to your wisdom and discernment, we're a fool. God, I repent of the times that we don't look for your guidance, for your wisdom. And I thank you abundantly with a grateful heart for the fact that you are patient and forgiving. As one of those beautiful young people prayed, you are, you are forgiving God. And so I pray for our state. I pray that our state be in a posture of surrender. I pray that we receive your wisdom and discernment. I pray for our governor and our first lady. And I can't imagine fully what goes on in their mind every day. And yet I'm so thankful that they turn to you. I know how their day starts. I know where they lean and they get their authority. And God, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray for a humility to sweep over our state, that we be prepared for the great movements that you have in store. God, if, if we be the, the battleground for the issues of, of, of you, then so be it. Then let us be armored up as a state and prepared to take on all that comes our way. God, we thank you for the leaders that are here. I thank you for the humility of the leaders that just stand in the back. They lift up your name as we do now, and we pray everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have two honors. Uh, two introduction honors. One is, my son is with me today, and as soon as, if you don't know Pam, as soon as she knows someone's here that can pray for a specific generation, you're going to be praying. And so about 15 minutes ago, my son was asked, uh, which, which I love, to pray for the teenage generation, so we're kind of going generationally here, uh, and so this is my son, Blake Dellenbeck. Dear Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come before you humbled, because we are not worthy to lift up your name, yet here we are at Florida State Capitol, giving praise to you, Jesus. Uh, Lord, it would be an understatement to say that uh, we live in a dark world, um, and yet the word that keeps coming to my mind today is hope. Um, you have said that in this world we would face tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world, and Lord, if we believe that today, then whom shall we fear? No schemes of the enemy, no power of darkness can stand against us, Lord. Uh, for my generation, as we see this world fall apart before us, so we just ask that we cling to the one thing that gives us hope, and that's you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that people are able to step out boldly in faith and declare your name within their schools, within their workplaces. Uh, Lord, let there just be an awakening. Uh, 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the power of your name. God, we thank you for this opportunity in this time. And let this not be one day of prayer, but let us continually center our hearts towards you each and every day. Let us find time to pray for you, Lord. Let us bring our first and our best to you each and every day. God, we thank you and love you. And it's in your powerful name we pray. Amen. I'm going to change this just a minute. Yeah. You're used to me, okay? You're used to me. A father and son. I want to say a quick prayer for father and son because the blessing song at the beginning was for the generations. And then um, Eric uh, is going to introduce a powerhouse that uh, is going to speak next. But I want to pray for you guys. Lord, I thank you, God, for this father and son that are standing here together today praying for the generations, Lord for dads, for sons, fatherhood that's been honored by our leaders. And Lord, I thank you for both of them and the siblings. I think there's five in all and for Eric's wife. Bless her, Lord, and give her great grace and strength. But Lord, I pray for the fathers and sons here today and all of them that are here and around our state and nation. God, that we see you move in the hearts of the fathers and the hearts of the sons. And yes, the, the mothers and the daughters as well. But bless this family and use them mightily. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes I'm still on there. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can't help but think when you see that group of young people up here, and obviously I'm biased with the young person here. Guys, we're just, we're paving the way, but they're the next group. Uh, they'll be the ones in that capital soon uh, running this state. Uh, this introduction for me is, is super fun. I thought Pam was going to steal it. That was going to be a bummer. Uh, this, is, this is one of my, I, I'll introduce her as my great friend, uh, one of my great faith confidants and uh, advisors and people we, we get to have real talk. I'll introduce it that way. What you would know her as is the secretary of the Department of Children and Families. And what I have to tell you as she takes this stage is there is no one that you would rather have in that office right now than her. Uh, she is a person who, again, finds her strength in her faith. We've talked about that since almost day one. I think it was in the first week we talked about just how difficult that role can be. Uh, 12,000 employees shaping the future of our child welfare system as, long as, as well as many other systems. And guys, I'm telling you, if you want to celebrate, celebrate that this woman is in that office. And with that, Secretary Siobhan Harris. to be with you this afternoon. James 1.27 says, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. There's no greater responsibility that we have at the department than caring for children and families. Children who are orphaned, whether temporarily or permanently, families, many of whom single parents contending with their own issues and challenges. We often see so much trauma, so much need for healing. It can be overwhelming, but I know in my heart we are doing God's work. And I felt that way from day one. Eric is right. Our very first conversation I shared with him the transition that I went through when I was asked to serve in this role and the affirmation upon affirmation that the Lord laid upon my heart in that first week. When I had doubt, it was like devotion after devotion just reaffirmed, you are where you need to be. It is a rather humbling role though to serve as Secretary of the Department of Children and Families. There are many things within my control and so many that are not. I wish I could end all the suffering and human trafficking and abuse of our children. But my comfort is knowing that God always has a plan. I know that he has a plan for my life 
and for the life of all the families that we serve. So my daily challenge is to put all of my trust in him. The power of prayer has been my salvation. My favorite scripture is Psalm 23. When I was a child, my mom loved that scripture as well. And so she strategically had it placed on a couple of walls. So it was never far from my eyesight. Initially, and rather superficially, I must admit, I liked it because my birthday is January 23rd. So Psalm 23, January 23rd, I liked a lot of things 2023. 20, Don't judge me, that was like seven or eight year old me. But as I've grown, I've really grown to love that scripture. Psalm 23 verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Doesn't that say it all? How powerful is that all by itself? For me, God is telling us he is leading our path. The good, the bad, the ugly. I am there. You shall not want. He will not lead you astray. And you shall not want when you put your faith and trust in him. I think it's important to remind ourselves of this, especially in these troubling times. It is not for us to try to solve all of life's challenges on our own. David is a shining example in the book of Psalms, looking at his faith, that we are to be like a child and to cast our cares onto the Lord. He will be our rock. He will be our shield. He will be our protector. On my hardest day, I know that the only way forward is through him. I've tried it the other way. I've tried to go it alone and it just doesn't feel right. It feels like trying to put on your left shoe on your right foot. It's rather uncomfortable. And so as we continue to grow in our faith, like strengthening a muscle, you have to work at it. And so you have to put an effort to grow in your prayer life. You have to grow in your connection, in your spiritual connection with the Lord and really inviting him to cover you in all aspects of your life. So that hopefully, as we all fall and stumble, and I am victim of that, when you forget and you try to go at it all by yourself, it will feel like putting the wrong shoe on the wrong foot. And you can quickly pivot and go in that safe space that God has created for all of us in his arms. My prayer this morning or this afternoon is for all of the children and families in this great state that they may know his perfect peace, that they will know him. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. You are such a merciful God. And often we feel we are not worthy. Even on our darkest day, you promise to be our light. We pray for all of those who are suffering, all of those who do not know you. We pray that they be comforted through their trials, through you. We pray that their path be lit and they find their way to you. We pray for all of the leaders of our great state, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the first lady, our legislators, all of the executive branch staff, and so many more. We pray that your will is always done. Lord, you are the ultimate comforter. We pray for your continued grace and that we may always be pleasing in your sight. Lord, I also say a special prayer for all the children in my care, in our care at the department, the 32,000. I pray for their safety, for their protection, and I pray, Lord, for all of the foster families who've opened up their homes. I pray for their comfort and protection. Dear Lord, you are wonderful, you are great. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. All these things I pray in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Wow, we have some great leaders. I'm going to pray for her and Secretary Hall after he speaks. Come on up. This is uh, Secretary Eric Hall of the Department of Juvenile Justice. And you know, it does matter that we pray for the kids because we want to keep them out of the juvenile justice system that God moves on their hearts. But I've asked him to come and share um, his heart and that we're going to, he's going to pray. Thank you, Secretary Hall. Good afternoon. I have to tell you, I'm very humbled to be here today with so many prayer warriors and to really be here in the presence of family and friends and faith. You know, I can tell you, you know, Secretary Harris and so many of us that work day in and day out in support of children and families, it's with purpose and it's with a purpose that's powerful and it's built on the faith and belief in others. You know, being able to serve as the Secretary of the Department of Juvenile Justice and to be able to serve as the head of an agency that is focused on our youth and families not only is it a point of privilege, it's really, you know, indicative of where I've really tried to build my entire, my entire life and my career. You know, being raised by two public school teachers uh, whose father was also a high school football coach, they instilled in me very early about the importance of serving others, helping young people achieve their goals not only in the classroom, but also on the field and in life to achieve their full goals and dreams for the long term. And watching that, it put me on a path early on to where I was able to, you know, eventually meet my wife who I've been married now to 20 years, and we raise our children with the purpose around power, faith, and belief, and using prayer to help guide our work. You know, she serves as a social worker here in our school system, and I can tell you again, being on a journey with someone who values that, not only has been an impact in my life, but it reinforces the critical mission that we do day in and day out, all across our state for youth and families. You know, I want to tell you just a quick story, and it's a story that I think reinforces the message of faith, and having faith. So, there's this businessman, and he's traveling down you know, the interstate, and he's got a business trip that's pretty far away, and he's kind of stuck in traffic. So he decides to pivot and get off the interstate and take a backcountry road to get to his destination. Well, as he's on that backcountry road and he's traveling, he loses sight of basically the fact that he's lost his navigation on his phone because he's lost his signal. So he's lost his way, and so he, he goes old school, and he reaches into his glove compartment to get out the map that is folded up in there so he can try to, re, you know, redirect his route and get back on, on course. Well... When he does that, he takes his eye off the road for just a moment, and he ends up veering into a ditch. Now, he's fine. He's not injured. His car is fine, but he's stuck. He can't get his car out. Now, he can't use his phone. Like I said, he doesn't have a signal. And at the same time, there's no one coming in either direction. He's out in the middle of the country. But he looks up over the ridge, and he sees the top of a barn. So he starts to walk in that direction, and as he comes up on the farm, he meets the farmer that lives there who's working in the front yard. The farmer comes up. The businessman tells him about his predicament, and the farmer says, absolutely, let me help you. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. So the farmer makes his way to the barn. He comes back a few moments later, and he's leading this poor, old, really just pathetic-looking mule. Now, this mule, who the farmer says, you know, his name is Old Warwick. So, you know, Old Warwick and I, let's go down here to your car, and let's see what we can do to get your car out of that ditch. The businessman, he obliges, and he says, okay, well, let's go. But in his mind, he's thinking to himself, how in the world is this mule going to get my car out of that ditch? There's just no way. Well, they continue, and they get to the car, and the farmer is hooking up you know, the, the mule to the front of the car so that he can you know, try to pull it out of the ditch. And After he gets everything set up, again, the businessman is setting back, and just, again, he's convinced nothing's going to happen. Well, the farmer takes the reins, he snaps the reins, and he, held, and he yells out, he goes, Pull, Warwick! Well, he continues then to say, Pull, Betsy! pull Clyde, pull Billy, and after a moment, what you see is old Warwick pulling as hard as he can, and sure enough, that car gets out of the ditch. Now the businessman, he is just blown away, he's floored, he doesn't understand how that happened. So of course, as he's going up to the farmer, and he's thanking him for helping him, he says, you know, sir, I just have to ask, he goes, two things, one, I'm blown away that old Warwick there was able to get my car out of that ditch, but I'm also kind of, you know, concerned and a little confused about why did you call out all those other names? Well, the farmer kind of smiled, and he looks back at the businessman, and he says, well, you called it. You're right. Warwick is just that. He's old. He's blind, and he has definitely seen better days. But he says, you know what? What Warwick does do is he still has his hearing. And when he heard those other names, he had faith, and he had confidence that he was not pulling alone. He was pulling with a team of others to accomplish a goal and a task. So old Warwick had faith. He had faith in others, whether he could see them or not. And so he pulled that much harder to accomplish what needed to be done. And I say that because as many of us are out serving and working in service to others, working to support our young people, our families, to help change the trajectory of lives and achievement overall, 
We all got to have confidence. We got to have faith that that pulling together is going to make unbelievable things happen because we know what happens when you put supports in place at the right time. And when you all pull together hard, unbelievable miracles will happen. So I thank you for that. And again, as we look at the story from Old Warwick, we all have to go forward with faith, not just faith in each other, but of course, faith in God. And I am so proud and privileged to be in a state where we value that and we value service to others. And we have laid the foundation and worked with leaders like our governor, our first lady, and so many others that believe in this work and what we do daily. And so with that, I want to ask you just to pray with me as we close. And uh, just again, thank you for, for hearing me out this morning or this afternoon. So as we bow our heads, I'll start with, you know, Lord Father God, I am grateful today to be in the presence of so many amazing leaders who embrace faith and prayer in support and in service to others here in our state. As we focus on the success of our youth, I pray that you will be with each child and provide them with the support, the guidance, and the resiliency to overcome all obstacles in life and to have great hope that through all challenges, amazing opportunities await. I thank you, Father, for the amazing educators, the juvenile justice professionals, the mentors, and all other youth-serving professionals who give tirelessly day in and day out to ensure the success of all children and families. Please lift up these dedicated heroes as they work to build stronger youth today and the future generations of tomorrow. Their leadership and service reminds us that it is truly a blessing and a gift to be able to serve others with the purpose of cultivating endless opportunities. As we embrace the power of prayer and the power of faith, I ask that you please help us strive each day to continue to break down barriers in our common work with a focus on coming together to leverage our talent, our resources, and most important, our passion for ensuring the success of others, that so many families can strengthen through our common mission of service. Allow our work to not only yield unimaginable outcomes for all Floridians, but perhaps allow our purpose-driven work to serve as a beacon for others to follow, all with a vision for helping each person achieve their full God-given potential. I pray over all of our public servants, and while praying, all, while praying over all of those perhaps wishing to serve as well, just let them know where to start. Help provide them with a pathway that leads them into service while inspiring others to do the same. Because in building this army of servants, we will transform all obstacles into unbelievable opportunities and blessings which will result in stronger children, stronger families, and stronger communities. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Ask Secretary Harris to stay to I mean uh, Hall to stay here in Secretary Harris and I want to uh, Dylan Fisher I'm going to introduce him but I'm bringing him up now because um, he's the director I should know this already Dylan <laughs> he's the director of the governor's faith-based and community based initiative office and I brought them all up here Dylan is going to speak in just a moment and pray but I want to pray for these guys because you heard from Secretary Harris and from Secretary Hall and you're about to hear from Dylan. He's a young man that the Lord's put in this position for such a time as this. Each one of you are an answer to prayer of multitudes of people. And I want you to know that. Let's just, you know what, stretch your hands out. I heard somebody on the call today say, do that to, to the governor. So let's do that. Lord, I just thank you for these fiery ones, for Secretary Harris, Secretary Hall, and Dylan Fisher, Lord, and their positions of authority that they are leading our state for the cause of the families. And God, that you are the answer. And Lord, I ask you to bless each one of them, their families. Give them great grace and strength, protection. Watch over them in their jobs, Lord. And Lord, their jobs, all of them get very weary. Even in doing good, it can be heavy. But Lord, I pray for strength in each new day that they know that somebody's praying for them across our state. Bless them abundantly and use them mightily for your purposes in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just thank God for Secretary Harris and Secretary Hall. Thank you guys for being here. And you're about to hear from Dylan, our faith-based leader, who I've prayed with a lot. And you know what? I told him to call me mom because he's the age of one of my kids. So, Dylan, come on. <laughs> Well, what a privilege to be here this afternoon. We get to gather together to celebrate our God, to pray together, and we're doing it right here on the steps of the old Capitol. This is the center of public policy making for the state of Florida. Although it's the third largest in terms of population, I think we all wager it's the most important in the country right now. What an honor to be here. And usually when you have to follow uh, the secretaries, this is a real challenge. 
But it's actually a privilege for me because I get the chance after they speak to say, look at what great leaders we have in the state. Can we just give a round of applause? And I don't want to say that lightly, truly. There are incredible public servants across the city and across the state, but what an honor and what a privilege, not just in their, in their very specific and important roles in juvenile justice and in, and in DCF, but to know that we have God-fearing leaders that are in these positions of influence, to know that when they're waking up in the morning and when they're going through the challenges of life and going through the challenges of their work, we know where they're leaning, we know where their heart is, we know where their motivation and their passion and their purpose come from. And we also know that's so much greater than anything that we can generate ourselves. So we celebrate that. What an honor to have godly leaders like these and so many others in our state. We're so grateful for that and how God has placed them for such a time as this and across our state enterprise. And I finally want to say, as it's hot and the sun's coming down, I'm reminded that as bright as this sun is, it reminds me of the sun in heaven. It reminds me of the greater purpose. It reminds me of the greater mission that we all have in our hearts. And we celebrate that today on National Day of Prayer, that we get to seek Him, we get to follow Him, and we get to pursue Him. Don't let it get lost, that there are important things that we do here. And this is an important city for an important state. But there will never be anything more important than following and seeking Him. So if you would, would you bow in prayer with me? Father God, we come to you humbly. God, humble our hearts. We give our lives to you. Father, I pray that this wouldn't be in vain. It wouldn't be about our names. It wouldn't be about our state. It wouldn't be about uh, production. It wouldn't be about an event. But God, that everything here is not about us, but everything about you. That we may decrease and that you may increase. God, thank you for the godly leaders of our state. Thank you for Psalms 23 and the green pastures and the cool waters that you lead us to. Yea, that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. Why? Because you are our God, and you are greater than all that we would ever face here on earth. So whether we're at the top of Mount Everest or in the bottom of the shallows, Father, you are there in every phase, every season, and every time in our life. We celebrate the mission and the purpose and the calling that you put on us. Thank you for the purpose that you've given each and every one of us. Thank you that we are fearfully made. God, we lift this up. I pray that we would go forward and glorify you in the steps that we take and the words that we make and the relationships that we build. God, that you would be glorified. In your son Jesus' name, amen. We are blessed. And you know, we are in a battle. How many of you guys know we are in a spiritual battle for the hearts and souls of this nation? And the battle is raging right now in regards to the unborn babies. And I can tell you, multitudes of you have prayed for decades upon decades upon decades for the unborn babies, for their lives. But I can tell you that the Catholics, come on up here. We've got the executive director of the Florida, and I know you well, the Florida conference of catholic bishops i know michael sheedy very well and we've uh, I, i've prayed with him for decades he serves on the faith-based community council with me and we've got a lot of other members here today too uh chad popple former secretary of dcf and i know uh dylan's team is here andrew and others but you know what it's not about any of us it's about the lord but it's about the unborn babies and today as you guys are there praying as you hear people up here talking and praying i want us to understand something Catholics have led the way, and I honor you in standing from the unborn babies. I just was at an event when um, Governor DeSantis signed HB5, one of the most historic pro-life bills, and I prayed with Father Frank Pavone. He wanted to be here today, priest for life, and they have cried out, and we have joined their prayers for the life of the unborn. So Michael's going to come and share. I've asked him to share and pray for the babies because we are in a battle, and every day, Pray for the Supreme Court of the United States of America and our Supreme Court and the leaders because we have got to see God move. We have got to see God move and we declare life. Michael? Thank you, Pam. Thank you all for being here. It's a, it's a great honor. Again, I know others have said it, but it is truly an honor to be here to pray together at this National Day of Prayer. And I will say, I did not know when I was asked to pray for justices of the Supreme Court and for the cause of life, that we would be sitting here um, at, on this day 
after a major breach of trust uh, has occurred in, in our Supreme Court. But please do join me in prayer. Gracious God, as we gather, we pray for the justices whom you have placed on the Supreme Courts of both the United States and the state of Florida. Strengthen their zeal for goodness and truth. Where confusion has emerged in the law, grant them wisdom to bring clarity and fairness. Where courts have erred, and they have erred, may they restore justice. Where courts have judged rightly, may they affirm that we and future generations may live in even greater peace. May our society flourish, and may all recognize that you, Lord, are with us, and say, this great people is truly wise and discerning. And gracious God, Father of the living, to you do we entrust the cause of life. Look down, Heavenly Father, upon the vast numbers of babies not allowed to be born, of the poor whose lives are made difficult, of men and women who are victims of brutal violence, of the elderly and the sick killed by indifference or out of misguided mercy. Grant that all who believe in you may proclaim the gospel of life with honesty and love to the people of our time. Obtain for us the grace to accept that gospel as a gift ever new, the joy of celebrating it with gratitude throughout our lives, and the courage to bear witness to it resolutely in order to build together with all people of goodwill the civilization of truth and love where every member of the human family is cherished and protected to the praise and glory of your name, you who are the creator and lover of life. Amen. We are in a spiritual battle. And I want to introduce the, the next two pastors that are going to be praying. It's uh, Pastor Kevin Beard and his wife Tracy, the directors of Pastoral Ministries for Florida Family Policy Council and the Capital Project. They lead prayer here along with us and others, but leading with pastors coming up to stand in the gap and pray for our nation. Come on up, guys. But as they're coming up, I kind of feel like we need to do something. I don't know if you guys want to stand, but with your kids, I just think we need to say this out loud. And I just want us to say, we declare life. And I want us just to stand. If you want to stand for a minute, this is going to be a prayer as we're declaring the life of the unborn, that we're going to see the Supreme Court rule rightly. We need to be praying for their protection every single day. But in, and then Kevin and Tracy, Pastor Kevin and Tracy are going to pray, whatever the Lord puts on their heart. But let's just, three times, let's just say, I just, we're going to say, we declare life. We declare life. We declare life. We declare life. Lord, we thank you. You are the giver of life. And we declare life in Florida and the United States of America. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us continue to pray, shall we? Our Father, we're reminded today as we gather here at the state capitol that this nation was your idea. You are the one that sets up nations and calls them forth for your purposes. From the covenants and compacts of our early explorers and settlements to the early American pulpits which preached the principles of liberty and national righteousness, to even our founding documents, which were clearly guided by your providence and word. We again declare that this nation is again one nation under God. Lord, I ask that even the etchings that are found on these buildings, on this campus, that reference you, somehow by your spirit be highlighted and recovered over this campus and over our civic government. Lord, we pray for the thousands of faithful pastors and shepherds that 
are scattered across Florida. We ask that you would strengthen them in their call and their responsibilities, that you would give them courage and leadership. We realize that pastors are one of the keys to renewing this culture, and we ask that you would use them. As de Tocqueville said when he toured this nation in the early 19th century, he said it wasn't the ingenious government of America, nor was it the commodious harbors or resources that we had as a people. But he said the key to America's goodness was that their pulpits were aflamed with righteousness. And I pray again that the pulpits of this state would just resound with righteousness and it would cause your people again to pray and to seek your face. We know that the days we are living in are challenging and pastors are challenged in their assignments. I pray that not one would shrink, but they would joyfully embrace their calling. And as we gather at the gates of our state here in Tallahassee, we're mindful of the many that are gathering all across this state at the gates of their cities and communities. And may we be reminded that God has appointed and established voices in this great discussion to come out of his church. Lord, we pray you'd strengthen all of this as we seek you this day in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we know from personal experience that as our pastors and leaders stand for righteousness, the enemy sets schemes against their families, their spouses, their children, and the grandchildren. So today we pray for our pastors' families to stand boldly beside them as they stand for righteousness, for them to encourage and exhort them on to good works. I break the spirit of fear that would cause these families and leaders to back down to the enemy and to shrink back in the fight. We know pastors here in Florida at this very moment that are being targeted by the unrighteous demonic forces. Their children and their wives are receiving vicious, brutal, violent, and threatening texts in the middle of the night. The enemy is vicious, but Lord, your word says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty for the tearing down of strongholds, for the casting down of arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So today, in the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy and every scheme he has assigned to the servants of the Lord and their families. We plead the blood of Jesus over their homes, over their marriages, and over their finances. And we pray these scriptures over our ministry families today. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength and my stronghold of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Psalm 18, Lord, you remind us, O oh, you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our fortress and our deliverer. In you we take refuge, for you are our shield and our horn of salvation, our stronghold. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. And then we end, we could go on and on, but we end today with Joshua 1, 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We pray these things in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you guys feel the presence of the Lord in the midst of the, the prayers? I believe prayers shift things in the heavenlies and then the Lord sends uh, open answers here. So I want to invite Pastor um, Matt Stone to come forward. I've asked him, he has a real heart for Israel. And you know what? Florida is one of the most pro-Israel states in the nation. You guys know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I've asked him to read a prayer that one of the rabbis I serve with on the faith-based community-based uh, initiative wrote, Rabbi Yosef Weinstock, rabbi of young Israel in Hollywood and Fort Lauderdale, wrote this prayer for today for the National Day of Prayer. And you know, the Jewish people are under tremendous attack. That d demonic spirit of anti-Semitism is trying to rise up again. And you know what? Not on my watch. 
We need to say that about everything that's happening right now. Not on my watch. We're going to hold the line. We're going to pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters. We're going to pray and see God move. So Pastor Matt Stone with Capital City Church is going to read this prayer, and then he's going to pray. Thank you. Thank you. What an honor and privilege it is to stand here to pray um, on behalf of Rabbi Weinstock, his prayer for the state, for his people. Let's bow our heads. He prays. O Father in heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless and protect the elected officials of our great state of Florida. Grant them the wisdom to govern the insight to lead and the compassion to care. Bless the citizens of Florida, the United States, and the entire world with the strength and the resilience to endure the challenges that may come our way, as well as the resolve and empathy necessary to partner with you, God, to make the world a better place. When the world seems dark due to hatred, bigotry, and violence, we are inspired to add light through acts of kindness and righteousness. Jewish tradition teaches that one of God's names is Shalom, which means peace. When we act godly and bring God into this world, then we will merit to see peace. Peace of mind, peace within families, peace within communities, peace among the nations. As the great Jewish sage Halal taught, Ethics of Our Father, 2, verse 4. Make God's will like your will, so that God's will make your will like His will. Amen. And now I will pray in my own words on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people. And now, Father God, we pray against the persecution of the Jewish people and of Israel, both near and far. We pray against and bind up the spirit of anti-Semitism. And we lose perfect love over your people. We ask for peace and provision for your people. We speak blessing over them. And we also pray for the peace and the blessing of Jerusalem. And that every nation would rise and call them blessed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our governor and our lieutenant governor, the cabinet, and all who serve in capacity of leadership, who stand with Israel and represent this state as such. And I pray that we will always remain a friend with Israel and that this great state and nation would always support your people in every endeavor. We thank you for the boldness and the courage of our governor and his leaders and the cabinet to stand and now we ask for your peace and protection and provision to rest upon them and their families, that truly no weapon formed against them would prosper and every tongue that rises against them in judgment, God, you would condemn. And now, Heavenly Father, today we pray for the salvation and the peace and protection of our nation. We pray for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to sweep over this nation, God, to bring us on our knees to repentance once again and to bring a great awakening through repentance and your great love. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, as we are about to close, I know everybody's pretty hot, but um, just bear with us. There's several things I know the Lord wants to do. As I was walking up here, there's a butterfly climbing inside that our tent under there. And I was thinking about that with life. And just, uh, anyway, God speaks to me in weird ways, people, okay? But um, I want Patrick, Pastor Patrick uh, Figueroa to come on up. He's got a couple of young people that are going to come with him. And Ron Inkenbrandt, who is Aubrey Breedlove's dad. Um, Aubrey, Aubrey's mom and dad came in from Missouri to be here today. And the three generations that were up here with worship. And I kind of want to set this up as we begin to close out the National Day of Prayer. It has been powerful today with hearing from leaders, hearing from our governor, 
hearing from all the leaders that have come out. And earlier today, I saw the governor's chief of staff and his policy directors and others that came out during worship and were able to stay for part of the event. Because we're blessed that we have leaders. We have leaders that love God and that care about each one of you and that care about our nation. And this isn't political. It is truly people that have answered the call for such a time as this. And each one of you, you're called to pray. You're called to stand in the gap. We're called to hold the line, to be a voice for truth. In the midst of a time where people are calling good evil and evil good and they've got themselves so mixed up about what truth really is. And my heart in prayer is to share truth with every, every generation. And so today, Pastor, Pastor um, Patrick Figueroa leads the gathering in Monticello. And he has a bunch of young kids, college kids, ten, teenagers coming out to worship and to pray together. And he's going to close us out in prayer with some of the young people. And then Ron is going to sing a song. First, he's going to sing America the Beautiful. But then he's going to sing a song he just wrote called The Awakening. We have to have an awakening in this nation, in real reformation, to sweep across all 50 states and Washington, D.C., Capitol Hill, the White House, to every capital in all 50 states, to every house, home of families, the church, every person, every age. I think of Fran Carlton here. Fran, I love you. She is a warrior. She started prayer here at the Capitol years ago as a state representative. And she wanted to be here today. Last year she prayed. But I know she's sitting under there praying as she prays every day. And she's praying God grips everybody for the truth. And so as Patrick closes this time in prayer, stay until America the Beautiful and the Awakening. This song, I believe, is an anthem right now for our nation. And that as we are ones of Ephesians 6, that we're the full armor of God. I love how our governor says to take the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit and stand strong. Because that's what the Word says. So today, as we end, I want to honor each of you for being here. I want to honor my husband, who's been battling cancer the last year. But we are declaring he is cancer-free as well. And he is still in the heat. Thank you, Tenny. I love you. And all of you that are here, and our sponsors, pastors, I know I was going to call you up, but we love you. Kids, we love you. If you guys want to, in the heat, if you want to make your way up in the midst of when we begin the America the Beautiful and the Awakening song, if you want to come up, you can. Kids, you can come stand and dance before the Lord. I honor you and I thank you for being here. Patrick, lead us in prayer as we close out. And Ron, thank you for being here. It's awesome. How many of y'all feel the presence of the Lord right now? How many feel the presence of the Lord right now? Come on, if everybody would just stand up with us as we end in prayer and worship. We're going to end just like we started today in worship. Number one, I want to say it's an honor to be here. It's also, uh, I want to give honor to, to Pam and Tenny for, for always setting the bar of prayer in the city and, um, and leading the charge to see an awakening happen not just in Tallahassee, but all across America. So I want to honor you in that uh, today. The scripture that came to me was Philippians 4, 6 through 7. says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm going to introduce you to uh, Anna Harrington, who's part of our leadership in prayer. These are two prayer warriors up here. And then also uh, my youngest son, uh, Nevin Figueroa, is going to pray. Then I'll close this out in prayer. Anna? God, I just want to thank you 
I just want to thank you for this day and that we can come together to pray in unison, God. And I want to ask, Lord, before you, I ask that you would bring an awakening in this state of Florida, an aroma that would rise to all 50 states in this country, Father. I ask that you would send the rushing waters of your spirit and your presence in the hearts that are hardened. God, I ask that you would soften hearts today, Father. I ask that you would help everyone to know in this place that they are chosen, that they are loved, they are cherished, and that they can be redeemed and that their life can be restored through you. Everyone here today, the Lord wants you. He is your Father. He created you and He wants you so much. He is here for you. And He wants to do amazing things in your life. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what your past has held, He is here to redeem you and give you a new life through His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants to give you salvation. It is your choice. He has provided mercy. Lord, soften the hearts today. Soften the hearts and open the eyes and minds of those around us. I ask that your presence would fill their hearts, God. Help them to know that they are truly loved by you, God. I thank you for this day, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. so great about your name. There's no other name, none more powerful than yours. Father, I just want to stand here right now, Father, and say that your love is enough, that your peace is enough, and that your joy is enough. God, for our lives, Lord, we can just declare your name and it be enough so much for our lives and father you are enough you are enough for our nation for our lives for our hearts and lord let us accept that god I ask right now that you're giving us boldness father to, to live a a courageous life for you father we're not we're not setting the bar too low for you but father we're setting an example high before we ever have but Father, we're setting an example, Lord, that we never had before. A true worship and a true prayer and a, tr and, a, and, a, and a true intercession for you, Father. Not just saying we're praying, but we're actually praying. In Jesus' name. Lord, that we're acting, Father, not with our words, but Lord, with our actions, Father. Over our state and over our country. Right now, God. Lord, that our eyes are fixed on you every day, Lord. Lord, that our presence is fixed on you. Father, wherever we go, let your presence be there, Father. Let your presence be wherever, wherever we go, Father, wherever we are. Father, let, let, let your rest and your peace reign over our lives as we go to and from. In Jesus' name. Father, as we end this today, Lord, we thank you for sounding the alarm during this last prayer time. God, we thank you that awakening is coming to Florida in Jesus' name. God, we thank you that it's going to start in Pensacola and travel all the way down to the Keys in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that this city of Tallahassee will see an awakening like never before. God, we thank you that every college, every school, every elementary school, from here all the way to down in Miami, that revival will hit the schools in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you prepare our hearts 
to get ready for your coming, Lord. So God, we thank you on this national day of prayer that we will consistently pray for the awakening that not is coming, that is here right now, Jesus. So Lord, do it in us. Lord, do it in this city. Lord, do it in this state that revival and awakening would go from Florida and go all across this nation in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. For a purple mountain majesty above the fruit plain, America, America, God shared His grace on thee and crowned thy good with broad from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the year. Thine alabaster cities gleam, undrenched by human tears. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Till all success be nobleness and liberty and law. Oh, America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crowned thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining. The Lord gave me this song a couple of um, months ago, and I just believe it is a song of uh, the times that we're in, and I just call it the awakening. I'm just just getting it out and about. You ready? This land, there's a war raging in the hearts of men. There's a lie mingling the darkness with the light. There's a hope like a beacon bright. There's a storm followed by a brilliant light. There's a new day coming up on the It's been a long time coming, now we're ready to stand, to wake up and rise up and take back our land. We're gonna stand with courage and do what we can to see a life of freedom for every man. It's the awakening, no longer blinded by the dark, the awakening. Touching every mind, every heart, the awakening, the awakening. And there's a well springing up inside, there's a song of a warrior's cry like the flood. By the Spirit of God, He will deliver us. And there's a love stronger than all we know. It's a love many have never been shown. Bringing peace that's greater than our understanding. Oh, it's 
starts with the seed, just a tiny spark, and soon a fire on the inside is burning your heart. You're overwhelmed by the truth that's being revealed. You recognize you're suddenly whole and healed in the awakening. Oh, opening our eyes for the first time, awakening. It's truth concealed now being revealed The awakening The awakening yeah, yeah. Just a tiny spark And soon a fire on the inside Is burning your heart You're overwhelmed by the truth That's being revealed You recognize you're suddenly Holy healed in the awakening No longer blinded by the dark The awakening Touching every mind in every part the awakening is like opening our eyes for the very first time the awakening the truth concealed now being revealed the Hallelujah. Thank you.